Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Good morning and happy Monday. Uh, this week I thought I would do a studio vlog. Um, I'm gonna actually rewind back in time to yesterday, Sunday. We went for a, a beautiful winter wonderland walk. So I, um, had, I just recorded it with my iPhone, so hopefully the footage will be okay. I haven't edited it yet, but I'm going to put that in here now. So going back in time. It is a chilly start to the day, but it is just too pretty to stay inside. So we're headed out to one of our local parks. We are lucky to have them so close to our house. by some green grass trying to poke through. What's that? <laughs> Something bright. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it in a while. It's the sun. Yay. like that here I'll cut up the date so today is Monday it is going to be a big huge computer day I keep thinking that um, I'm gonna have some painting days and I will but um, today is a big computer day I'm getting ready for the sale going on this week on Instagram so I'm uploading a bunch of photos and videos to a scheduling app that I use so um, a big computer day. If you are interested in that sale, make sure you go down below. You can either subscribe to my newsletter and you're going to get an exclusive discount code or you can follow me on Instagram. Also, the link for that is down below and um, there's going to be daily painting, one painting every day for the next several days. I'm not sure what day we're on now. Um, so um, yeah, one painting a day for sale on Instagram or click the link to su subscribe to the newsletter and um, you'll get a discount code for anything on my website. And now I'm gonna get back to the computer work and um, I'm not sure when I'll pick you guys back up next. If something exciting happens, I will pick you up. Ending the day like I started the day on the computer and also with a lovely little sunset in the distance. Obviously nothing exciting has happened. <laughs> At any rate, we're going to go have some dinner. We have leftover a yummy chicken noodle lemon chicken noodle soup with lots of vegetables and some kale. So uh, we're going to go enjoy some dinner and I will see you guys tomorrow.
Tuesday. It is um, rather cloudy and windy out. So hopefully that won't affect the video today as far as the lighting goes. But um, I think the plan for the day is to open a couple boxes perhaps and experiment with some new product. All right, I've got two boxes here. One is from my favorite art supply store, fine art store. And then the other one is from a, I believe I'm saying this right, Sinopia, and they make gesso that you can use with encaustic. So let's see what's in each box. All right, I got two different kinds. I don't, again, know if I'm saying this right, but this is their casein gesso absorbent chalk ground for all media. And it says suitable on all surfaces. So we're gonna see how this works. And then I got chalk ground casein gesso. And this is for silver point techniques, which I have actually have no idea what that is, but on their website, it was also said it was good for watercolor. So I wanted to test the two out and possibly going to be ordering them in much larger sizes, depending on how they work. Okay, so I'm on their website here, and if I click on the case and gesso for all surfaces, let me just open this up in a new link, and then this is the case and absorbent chalk gesso and silver point ground. So click on that. So the case and gesso for all surfaces has a description here, and then there's also obviously some questions and answers. And this says it's good for encaustic and egg tempura, et cetera, et cetera. And then it also talks about um, applying only two coats per day and letting them dry in between. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that and doing you know, what they say to do. And then over here, this is the case and absorbent chalk, gesso and silver point ground. And this does say it is actually better for um, watercolor and not as good as in, for encaustic or oil painting, although it could be used for that. So um, there you go, the difference between the two. Okay, so my plan here is to apply a layer of both along with my normal R&F encaustic gesso to watercolor paper and to mixed media paper. So I'm gonna be using two different papers and then three different gessos. I'm gonna ideally let this dry overnight. Well, not ideally, but I'm gonna let it dry overnight just to make sure everything is completely cured. It doesn't say that you have to do this and it doesn't say that you necessarily have to do that with the RNF and caustic gesso either. But I thought, why not um, take the extra precaution, if you will? And um, yeah, so I'm gonna do that and then uh, we'll see what is up next. Okay, here's the setup. I've got some towels down and then the various different papers laid out along with the various different gessos. And I also have some, um, what are these? <laughs> Little sticks, stir sticks. And I only have one encaustic brush, or rather one gesso brush. So I'm gonna try to rinse it out really good in between each one, and then also wring out as much water as I can. All of these do say they can be mixed with water to thin, but I'm gonna try not to do that as much as possible. So, and then of course I have each paper labeled with, if the camera would focus, there we go with the type of gesso and what type of paper it is, watercolor or mixed media. So let's get to putting some gesso down.
Okay, I have the first coat down and I wanted to kind of give you my initial thoughts, opinions, ideas, I guess, <laughs> more thoughts than anything. Um, first, the two casein gessos both smell kind of like um, earthy. They're a totally different um, smell than the RNF gesso. The RNF gesso sm smells more like a paint. Neither is good nor bad in my opinion, um, just a different smell. So if you're like highly, highly sensitive to paint smells, maybe these case and gessos would be um, an alternative for you. Although if you're highly sensitive to paint smells, you may or not may not be painting. Um, at any rate, I have never been bothered by the RNF gesso smell. Um, it was just kind of a general observation. And the other general observation was the consistency or thicknesses in each of the three products. The casein gesso was actually the thickest and went on quite, um, it didn't glide on super easily. It definitely, you know, was fine to paint with, like it wasn't a hard, it was just more, it was a more thick consistency, more like a heavy, extra heavy, gesso consistency if you're familiar with acrylic gesso. The casein chalk absorbent gesso ground, like the smaller container of it, I think it was the chalk gesso, it was very, very thin. It was the thinnest of the three. It was almost the consistency of like a skim milk, slightly thicker than water, but really, um, really, really runny. Um, and so it, it went, it spread really far, as you could imagine. So um, again, just a couple observations, neither is right or wrong, bad or you know good, just some general observations on my point. So I'm gonna let these dry. And then what I think I'll do is I will compare the colors of the three once they're dry. And then I'm also gonna put on a, um, a second coat. I should mention the case and gesso does say to use a minimum of two coats. So definitely need to put two coats of gesso on that. And I believe the RNF says the same thing. I've always done two coats. All right, at any rate, moving on to the next thing. I also wanted to mention one more thing while I'm comparing the three. The casein gessos, the brush practically washes right out with water. Um, not much soap was needed on there. So um, kind of a benefit to that gesso, I would say, where the RNF gesso, I definitely need to soap the brush up a little bit to get all of that gesso out. Again, it's not necessarily good or bad, just, you know, maybe a fact. <laughs> I don't know. At any rate, um, that was the last kind of observation that I wanted to point out and let you guys know. I took a quick lunch break, answered some emails and things like that, and sat back and watched a quick little vlog from this little wonderful life, which is, um, who's Allie. So um, anyways, I'll link that below. It's a cute little vlog, little YouTube channel that I um, try to catch up on from time to time. At any rate, I'm gonna open this box here now. So let's see what's inside. All right, I don't normally go this crazy ordering pre-made colors because normally I mix them myself. But I was ordering and um, couldn't stop, <laughs> apparently. So at any rate, I have a lots of fun new encaustic colors, encaustic paint to work with. And then I also got this temperature regulator, and this is to use with something I have coming hopefully soon. Basically, you can plug in electronic things to it, and then this dial you can turn so that your electronic thing, people use it with wood burners and all kinds of stuff for encaustic, but it allows doesn't allow the, the um, tool to get too hot because you can control the temperature this way versus just on or off. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you more when the tool comes. But at any rate, look at this fun stuff. Oh, and I also, I'm trying the Damar resin here. I'm trying this Damar resin here. Normally I order mine from Blick, 
but since I was already ordering from a fine art, this I thought I might as well try it because I'm almost out of the Blick brand. So there you go, fun stuff. All right, if you've been here a little while, you know I store my encaustic paint in these old cigar boxes. And I make labels for my paint. So most of them are square and I make the labels for them and then they just slide in and out of these little sleeves here. However, seeing as how these are round, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make a label for them. I haven't decided if I'm gonna make a label for them and keep them in the round shape or if I'm gonna put them into these empty jars. I have to see how many empty jars I have. And then the other downside is now I have to find a place to store these empty jars versus just being able to stick them into these cigar boxes that I already have. But obviously once I open it, you know, I'm gonna lose the label here, which is why I create my own label. So still trying to decide what to do there. And in other news, you guys, if you've been here a little while, know that I make my paint swatches on this molding that I get from Home Depot and then I write the color name on the back. So I have uh, blues and greens over here and oranges, pinks, purples, yellows, reds over here. And then I just hang them off of this, um, I can't remember what they call this, this like roping chain thing here off of my rolling cart. So it works really nice, but I'm out of this molding. I don't have any more blank ones left. So I need to add that on my list of places to go and things to get. And now I'm really taking you behind the scenes here <laughs> and um, showing you inside of this cabinet where I keep more encaustic supplies. Um, and then, oh, this is the mold that I use to create those colors with, and that's what makes them square, obviously square mold. But I came in here, don't find the huge mess, to see how many empty little tins I have. Um, to see if I have enough to put those colors in. The problem with using these is then when I want to mix up a color, um, I don't have any tins. So um, I have to kind of take some inventory here. So let's see what we got. I find that there are two problems keeping them in these jars. The first is they're a little bit harder to open. They don't have it on straight. That's the first problem. The second problem is I forget I have these colors because I store them behind the barn doors and not with the rest of the encaustic paint. These tins, none of them are labeled or anything because they were all custom colors that I had mixed up when I was doing a, either a series and or a large painting and I wanted to make sure I had plenty of encaustic wax that was that color once I found the color that would work. However, now these tins are, some of them are quite empty like this one, there's hardly any in there. I don't know if you can see that. And that's just taking up a tin and I completely forget that I have the color. So yeah, trying to figure out what to do with these. So I think what I need to do is come up with a better solution to either put them in the tins or keep everything outside of the tins. Um, but if I keep them in the tins to store them with the rest of the encaustic paint. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to have a think on that, I think. A think on that, I think. <laughs> Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> 
I'm going to apply one last layer of gesso to all of these pieces of paper and call it a day. But I did want to let you guys know the chalk ground gesso, I think because it is the uh, most runny, the most wet, if you will, the paper did curl up quite a bit. Um, obviously this isn't bothering me at the moment, but um, you could always tape it down to the surface so that it wouldn't curl up. Um, but I just did want to point out that thing, that one kind of minor detail. And tomorrow I'm going to hopefully the lighting will be better in the studio because right now it is horrible to compare the colors. So I'm going to hopefully show you the color differences of each of these gessos tomorrow and we will see you then. Good morning. Um, this is how I left the state of the studio last night. Uh, a bit of a mess. The encaustic tins, the empty encaustic tins are still on the floor. <laughs> Need to get those picked up. And also the encaustic wax in those metal tins, that's still in there. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. So I think what I'm going to do with this encaustic paint that is in these metal tins from leftover series projects and leftover big paintings, I'm going to melt that down and then pour it into my little square molds and then put that away into the appropriate colored boxes. And in the meantime, these gesso pieces have all dried. So that's really nice. The lighting in here is still really bad as it has started to kind of snow flurry really lightly. So it's pretty, but um, it is definitely still cloudy out. Okay, so while those tins back there heat up on the griddle, I brought these gessoed papers over to the windowsill to see if maybe I couldn't get some better light over here to try to show you some of the differences between them. So um, let's see how this goes. All right, I thought I'd show you the color first. I'm trying not to get too close because if I do, the shadow comes over them. So I'm just going to try to zoom in here and show you that. But the color first, all of them are kind of a creamy color, not a white, white color, but um, that's perfectly fine with me. So that um, is a white piece of just regular old printer paper. So you can kind of see the colors there, hopefully anyways. All right, I turned off the lights in the studio to see if maybe that shadow would go away and it seems like it has, but it's a little bit dark now. Um, but at any rate, this is the RNF gesso one. And I put these in kind of whitest to creamiest order. So I think this one to me looks to be the closest to white. And then this is the chalk gesso, a little bit creamier. Again, I don't know if you, the camera, I think you can see that there and then this next one is the casein gesso and it is again just slightly creamier than this chalk gesso but not by a whole lot here so and all these are on the same exact mixed media paper and then one last thing is the um, feel of them so this RNF gesso I'm gonna stop talking here you can see, I don't know if you can or rather hear that it's a little bit scratchy. It has a, a little bit of a rough texture. I mean, not horrible. It's really pretty smooth, but um, it's kind of like a, a super, super fine, fine grit sandpaper, maybe not even that textured. And then this is the chalk ground one versus RNF. I think you can hear that. And then this is the case and gesso one. And this to me feels the most um, buttery soft, if you will. There's really not much of a, too much of a difference between these two, but it definitely does feel a little bit more buttery soft. So um, just for what it's worth. Now getting back to these tins, this melted paint here, 
or rather the wax is now melted. So I'm using these clips to pour it into this mold because obviously the tins are hot. I'm also mixing up a couple of these colors that are really similar. Like for example, these pinks are all somewhat similar in color and shade. So I'm mixing them because there's again, not much left in some of these tins. So I'm just mixing the colors up. All right, here are the colors that came out of those tins. And that's pretty cool now, but you can see they just pop right out of this um, silicone thing. But basically what I wanted to show you is that this amount here is what come, came out of basically almost a full tin. So um, not a ton of wax fits into these tins, um, but they are handy to have. And now I have a bunch of tins and lids that need matched up and put away. So that's this next step here. Well, you know what they say, one project leads to another. how nice and organized this cabinet is there. Right here, I'm hoping that the item that I've ordered and should be in the mail any day now, or coming any day now rather, will fit right there. But the rest of it is um, quite nicely stacked and all of those tins fit in there. Nothing is falling out when I open the doors. So um, completely sidetracked, but well worth doing. So up next, I need to figure out where to store all of these new paints and how I am going to store them. And what I think I've decided, or rather what I definitely have decided is I'm gonna keep them in the plastic bags, store them in the plastic bags for now and see how that works. But I need to go through all of these other containers of paint and see if I have room. So that is up next sorting through paint and maybe trying to reorganize some of these boxes into different colors. What you might be thinking right now have you lost your mind are you really making plastic bags yes yes I am and I might have lost my mind um, but I have plastic lying around there's no point in buying more plastic bags and I want certain sizes so I am now down another rabbit hole of organizing all of my plastic paint and I'm making plastic bags. All right, so I went down a complete rabbit hole this afternoon, complete rabbit hole. I am now thinking about changing out these cigar boxes to these plastic bins uh, for storage because I think it'll be easier as I maybe continue to get a few more colors it gives me some room to grow versus these actually let me show you okay i'm losing the light quickly here in the studio and the lights are casting a bad shadow but this is the red pink and purple bin and as you can see it's like stuck to the brim there's no um method of organization here which i don't hate 
but at the same time, I think it would be easier if I'm searching for a color, especially going forward, there's really no room to add anything there. So I'm thinking about switching out to these plastic bins. Um, I don't like the look of them as much as the cigar boxes. The cigar boxes are just kind of a cool, um, more, I don't know, natural kind of feeling than this plastic, but um, I'm debating. So yeah, major rabbit hole. So I'm gonna call it quits tonight up here in the studio. Go down and figure out what we're gonna have for dinner. <laughs> And um, I will pick you guys back up tomorrow. Hopefully do stuff with that gessoed um, piece of paper. That was my plan for the day. But like I said, went down a major rabbit hole. All right, we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, guys. I don't know if you can see that behind me there, but it is a winter wonderland outside. It is beautiful. So um, the neighbors are also getting some work done on their house still. They're actually, I, I gotta give these people credit, they're outside digging in this crazy weather. But hopefully it's not too distracting inside here as I'm talking, you don't hear a bunch of clattering going on in the background. Um, I am hoping this weekend to get out in this lovely weather. Hopefully there still be some snow on the ground. I would love to take you guys along cross country skiing, but um, we'll see. Today, however, I am going to work on those gessoed pieces of paper to um, experiment around with some watercolor. So let's see how that goes. I'm experimenting with some three different colors of tube watercolor, some paintbrushes, a couple different paintbrushes, of course, some water, and the dip pen here. And I'm gonna apologize right now for once again, the shadows and some of these camera angles here. Didn't realize it when I was recording. Hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing and it's enjoyable. So sit back and hopefully enjoy. wanted to show you a few quick things and this somewhat happened with all of the gesso but you can see I think you can tell where some of that white gesso mixed in with the watercolor so um, you know it could be an interesting effect but I do think if you get too much water down or scrape along too much of any of these you get, you know, that white right there. You can see that blue is a lot lighter there than the rest of the blue. And that's not watered down. That's just from the um, gesso mixing in. So, um, you know, it's, it's just something to take note of, um, or for me to take note of rather. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let this dry and then I think I'm gonna get out some India ink and play with that next. sitting here painting I just wanted to show you my view hopefully it will focus in for you it's like a snow globe out there crazy and really really pretty at right, the last thing I wanted to mess around and experiment around with, with this gessoed paper, are these ink tense blocks and a kind of a, a flat brush here. It's a little bit wider than the other ones. And these I use quite a bit in 
underpainting. I used a lot in underpainting last year. So I wanna see how they're gonna hold up to this other type of gesso. All right, thought I would give you my opinions of these new to me gessos and um, these by no means <laughs> are anywhere close to being done. Um, in fact, I'm probably just gonna cut them up and put them in my sketchbook, but back to the gesso. So r &F, I have used many times in the past and um, they make a great encaustic gesso specifically meant for encaustic paint. So this though does not take water media real well. It's, it, it turns the water media into more of a milky, creamy effect. Um, not a bad thing. And like I said, I've used it before in the past and, and it's, it's fine. It works out just fine. Um, but just know that it will make your water media more um, opaque and a little bit less like a water medium. At least that's what it does for me. Then moving on, these are the Sinopia ones. I think I'm saying that right. This is the chalk ground casein gesso. Again, I think I'm saying casein right, but I could be wrong. Um, this is actually meant for watercolor. And I think this was the one that was less um, likely to bleed into the water media, which makes sense because it's meant for watercolor. And then moving on to their regular casein gesso. Um, this had a little bit of bleed, but not nearly as much as the RNF. So um, it, it really did not affect it too much, just a little bit. So um, yeah, there you go. My opinions on these gessos. Now, having said all of that, I have not tried any of these gessos with the encaustic medium or encaustic paint. So um, that I will be coming doing in a future video, maybe next week. I'm not sure exactly when I'm gonna get to that, but hopefully next week. Um, so at any rate, um, you know, this is just using it with the water media um, supplies. So technically <laughs> these gessos except for the chalk gesso is not really meant for water media supplies so take that all with a grain of salt um, i use a lot of water media supplies before i put down any encaustic paint and enc the encaustic medium i like to do a lot of underpaintings first to kind of give myself a jumping off point um, but if you don't use water medias with your encaustic um, RNF is perfectly fine, and so is that casein gesso, the Sinopia. Um, as far as I know, I, like I said, I haven't used it with the encaustic paint. So, um, yeah, just take all of that with a grain of salt, and again, just my personal opinions, um, and take it for what it's worth. Sitting here editing this video now, and I am realizing it is a, a long one. I did not realize how much content I had. So I think this is where I'm gonna end the video, or rather I know this is where I'm gonna end the video, but before I do, I had a couple quick questions for you. Is this ending up being too chatty of a video? Um, are you guys, is this just too much information? Um, you know, like the gesso and all of that stuff, is that too much information? Or do you wanna to continue to know all those little nitty gritty details? Um, I know it's important for me, but I want to know what you would like. So um, let me know down below in the comments if you would like more shorter content, more just concise information, or even if I were to break this video up into say like two or three different videos, is that better? I'd love to know. At any rate, stay tuned for more outside adventures. I actually probably am gonna to try to get out cross country skiing this weekend. Looks like it should be pretty promising weather. And so I'm gonna to try to record some. So look forward to that in an upcoming video. And if you did enjoy this video, you guys know it really does help me out if you hit that thumbs up button. If you aren't subscribed and would consider doing so, I would also greatly appreciate that. And again, I really want your feedback. So be completely honest about stuff. 
I am not going to get offended by it. I'm the one who wants to know the information. So um, no worries in offending me. I really want to know what um, you're finding hopeful, enjoyable, all of that good stuff. So again, thanks so very, very much for coming along. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.